The CDC estimates that the highly contagious Delta variant now accounts for over 90% of new COVID-19 cases here in the U.S. as ICU beds across the country once again filling up. Let's bring in the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota, Dr. Michael Osterholm. Dr. Osterholm, thanks for being with us. You have said that COVID-19, quote, seems to want to run sprints and not marathons. That said, what do you think the next few weeks, the next few months are going to look like for us in this country? Well, un unfortunately, it's not clear. If we look at the patterns of how Delta has emerged around the rest of the world, we see these very rapid bursts in cases, this big surge like we're seeing in the United States right now, and then a rather rapid descent in cases, meaning that they drop precipitously, but they never go back to baseline. A good example is the United Kingdom. They started out at 1,000 cases a day reported. During the peak, they got to 47,000 cases a day, and then the number dropped rapidly, but it hit 26,000 and leveled off there, and today it's a 30 32,000. So we're not quite sure what it's going to do in this country. The uh, states that have been hit the hardest and the ones that are probably really at their peak about right now only make up 12% of the U.S. population. And so the other 88% of the population are still really a too early to call kind of situation where we're seeing in the Northwest, we're seeing in the Southeast, we're seeing in the Upper Midwest, also beginning of these rises in cases. Question will be how high will they go? So, you know, for the next six to eight weeks, this is going to be a state tune moment. And Dr. Ulsterholm, uh, on the heels of this news we're getting today about the, the J&J &J shot and possibly an extra shot, you actually take issue with the word booster. Explain why we're getting that language wrong in your opinion. Well, a booster infers that I want, at one time had full protection uh, from uh, the virus and kind here with the vaccine. But when you think about childhood vaccines, for example, some of them we actually give three or four doses before we actually get to the basic level of protection. And so what we have to distinguish here is for the immune compromise, for example, where they never did accomplish a getting to that level of protection with their first two doses. So giving them a third dose is not really a booster. It's what I call part of the prime series. Now, for those that did get adequate immune protection at one point, then it wanes. That then becomes a booster kind of idea, meaning that, okay, you, you did get protection, but it's starting to not look so good. Let's boost it up. And I think distinguishing those are important because we don't want to use boosters if we don't have to, uh, to prevent serious illness and hospitalizations. We need the vaccines around the world. But if we need them for a prime series to say, you got to have three doses before you're protected, then I think that's a very different situation. And while we're treading through all of this uncertainty, you have stressed repeatedly the importance, not just of wearing masks, but the right kind of masks. So what kind of masks should we be wearing and what kind should we be avoiding? Well, remember, any time you're trying to do any kind of respiratory protection with a face cloth covering, surgical mask, what we call uh, N95 mask or respirators, you're looking at two different is issues. You're looking at fit and filtration. Fit is how well does it fit around your face? How tight is it? If you have any leaks, that's like having swim goggles that leak. You know, how good is that? And the filtration is important because if you do breathe air through a cloth or through a type of material, that's put in these N95s, how well is the air able to move through it so that you will actually continue to wear that whatever covering that is you're using. And one of the things we're urging is people look at using N95s, these types of masks that actually have electrostatic charges in the material, meaning that there's a, a way to catch the virus, even though the, the size of the spaces in the mask are large enough to let you breathe easily. So think of it like a big filter. Cloth doesn't do that. And so we really want to get people back to using N95 respirators. A year ago, I couldn't have made this recommendation because we didn't have enough for our health care workers, uh, let alone for the public. Today, we have more than an adequate supply. So uh, wherever we can, use N95s or KN95s uh, for all ages if possible. And Dr. Ulsterholm, I had a, uh, a viewer send something to me on social media this week, and there was a little sign that was made that said, that which doesn't kill you mutates and then tries again. And the CEO of Pfizer is uh, kind of sounding the alarm in that regard, that they believe that eventually a variant is going to emerge that is resistant to the vaccine. Do you think that's where we're headed? Well, it's surely possible. I think everything we have to uh, be uh, looking at right now uh, should cause us to have a great deal of humility because this virus has surely thrown us curveballs. But right now, for example, with the Delta virus, we don't see evidence 
of that actually evading the immune protection of the individual. We surely can see that your protection may wane over six to eight months, which would then come into play with the booster. Or the thing that I think makes Delta such a difficult virus, it is so really very, very infectious. So that we're seeing that in some people likely that are the breakthrough cases, these are people that the level of virus they inhaled was just so large that it overwhelmed the protection of what the vaccine could provide. Now remember, these people still generally have much, much milder illness. Uh, but they still get infected. I wouldn't call that a type of uh, variant that somehow evades the immune protection. It's just a dose with the dose. So sure, we have to always be mindful that we could have one like that. We did have several previous variants that had indications that they were going to evade the immune protection, and they never really materialized and took off around the world. So, so far, that has not been a problem. Well, we certainly appreciate your expertise and your time. Dr. Jen Ashton was telling me she listens to your podcast every day. She's a big fan. So thank you for taking time to be on the program today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the morning on GMA.